we are going to discuss the question 3 of uh, December 2020 online exam. Question 3 uh, normally based on the common free scene given and it normally uh, carry 50 marks. You know uh, about uh, this questions, so one month before the exam you are given uh, free scene relevant to this, then uh, unseen part will be given uh, in the exam some extents uh, of the information is given for the initial information provided. Uh, so, when you are answering for this question number 3, it is important uh, to familiar with the free scene given. Since it is uh, provided one month prior to your exam, so it is your duty to go through uh, go through the free scene few time and do whatever the analysis you can do based on that. So, probably uh, your tuition provider may also help uh, on that to you uh, to some extent, right. but do not uh, uh, solely rely on your tuition provider, right. So, do your own analysis also, right. Uh, Normally, uh, there are few additional part uh, tested here. So, we look at about how many parts uh, tested in this question. Actually, uh, there are uh, six part A, B, C, D, E, F. There are six part A, B, C, D, uh, E, F. Even within the D uh, part, there are two part, uh, part 1 and part 2. Right. Uh, so, before uh, going through this uh, unseen, unseen part, or in other word, uh, additional part given in the exam, uh, we will look at about uh, the freezing little bit. So, I am not going to go, go through free scene uh, word by word, right, uh, but uh, uh, to get an understanding, if you remember the free scene given uh, before the exam, uh, it was given uh, relevant to uh, a company called healthcare and leisure private limited HCL, healthcare and leisure private limited HCL. Uh, if you remember, uh, there were few uh, pages in there. Uh, how many pages? There were 20 pages, free scene was given. So, if you look at about this one, uh, so there is an introduction about the company, right. Uh, so, it say uh, they are uh, this uh, healthcare and leisure private limited is one of the largest companies in Sri Lanka. So, then talk about the, uh, what are the sectors they are, it is well established both in health and leisure sectors and uh, 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 some found information is given, Edward De Silva uh, who, uh, who is the founder of this company. Then uh, some uh, historical overview is given about the company. Uh, so, if you look at about the owner Edward. Uh, Right, he is qualified with uh, bachelor degree in chemistry uh, from University of Peradeni in 1965. Then his father was a traditional Arvadi practitioner. Then uh, after graduated, uh, he started, uh, he joined with a uh, drug company as a chemist. Then uh, his expectation was to run his own company one day. Uh, then uh, what happened uh, later in 1969, uh, Edward established healthcare drug private limited as a wholesale and retail uh, uh, chemist and druggist in Colombo Fort. Then uh, what happened, uh, 
So he asked one of his friends to join the company, George uh, Gunawardhana, who is qualified economics uh, uh, to join with the company. Then uh, 1978, uh, right, uh, what happened? Uh, they become uh, the first pharmaceutical and veterinary product manufacturing facility. Uh, uh, he uh, established the company by taking a uh, loan. Then uh, he was eager to diversify the company. So, he uh, went to this uh, toiletries and personal care product market also. And 1985, he entered into fast moving consumer good uh, industry, FMCG market. Uh, there were two sectors uh, at that moment uh, pharmaceutical and FMG. It was led by two persons, Kamal Dias uh, led the pharmaceutical segment. Then Vasanadi Silva, Edward wife, uh, uh, led the uh, FMG sector. Then uh, in 2004, SCL went to uh, establish first hospital in Nugegoda. Then 2008, SCD was uh, restructured. They changed their vision and missions. In 2009, uh, SCL enter uh, into the leisure and travel business segment. Then under this new uh, uh, SBU, uh, Bonega Ponseca was appointed as uh, the CEO. Then Bonega's information is given, he is a member of SIM. And he is having a lot of experience in marketing, uh, tourism, and international uh, 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 market also. Then SCL uh, company uh, plus, uh, introduced outbound inbound travel agency. Then after few years, uh, uh, then uh, right, they opened their plus hotel, SCL Coral Garden in Hikkadu, uh, which is a five star hotel and uh, had a capacity of 100 room and uh, they want to uh, start another two hotels. Uh, one is Mulatiu and an other one is uh, Pasiguda umbrella the, uh, under the same uh, umbrella. Then it was uh, 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 who is the chairman of SCL decided to enter the logistics sector in 2010. Then uh, Kusar Perra was uh, appointed as the CEO uh, of uh, this uh, company, logistics sector company. Then uh, they decided to enter into pharma and energy sector also in 2014, they enter into that uh, segment. Then December 2019, SCL brought 35 percent of the stated capital of healthcare drugs, Bangladesh Limited. Then uh, there is some interesting information given. This uh, Edward has held the uh, chairmanship of SCL from the company's inception. Its unique uh, leadership has been the key human capital that has brought the company to its current level of development. Edward has a firm belief that adding a strategy business unit to the company will continue its past and steady growth. However, Prabhat Jaisinger, the chief expert of the HCL since 2017, has opposed this belief and has strongly argued Edward to consider separate individual unit into unique companies in order to minimize risk. So, normally Edward believe uh, in adding more uh, unit, but CEO opposed that one, he want to have some independent companies. Then uh, at the same time, uh, uh, he want to have more efficient internal control system to measure the performance of each sector accurately. Then some information is given about the leaderships. Uh, he always think about the future. Then uh, uh, he was a good uh, athlete uh, in school days. Then uh, 
normally he uh, more worry about uh, his team capabilities uh, to increase uh, his team capabilities he provide uh, regular training to his uh, team members and he always uh, emphasize the importance of acquiring new technology then uh, he was uh, believe uh, of partnering and building relationship with people then uh, he normally trusted his uh, employees then uh, he believe that employees are the strength of the company and uh, he provide uh, the facilities such as transport uh, uh, prudent uh, logistic for certain staff members not for everyone right is key information for certain staff members in order to keep them productive and loyal to the organizations then employees are paid well and there are long standing employee work in the company Edward inspire his board members as well as his employee to achieve unexpected remarkable result so he always uh, inspire employee to achieve unexpected remarkable result that mean more task oriented no more ta uh, uh, target uh, 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 achieve then uh, he gave uh, workers autonomy over specific jobs authority to make decisions for they have trained then uh, they talk about the uh, best practices and the level of product and service quality uh, they have acquired some uh, quality standard like iso 9001 2008 then uh, financial strategies have been given so eps uh, was one of the concern Uh, normally she will operate five sectors smgg healthcare leisure and travel logistic and power and energy so uh, this edward always look for investment from non trend for equity then risk management part that is more applicable with uh, actual auditing subject then covid 19 uh, pandemic uh, situation was explained in the pre scene then sector review fmcg uh, some information was given relevant to fmcg uh, then uh, healthcare about their pharmaceutical company then the hospital the leisure and travel sector so it was a multiple award winner the logistic power and energy then human capital they train uh, employees then ownership uh, structure has been given then additional information is given about each company so i'm just giving uh, some brief idea on this then pharmaceutical market has been explained in details industry focus has also been given about the market now for example there are some opportunities for uh, uh, for pharmaceutical market like uh, non communicable diseases ncd then pharmaceutical trade information has been given regular environment information has also been given then profit and loss of the company has been given right uh, i'm not going in detail on this i just want to uh, clarify uh, some uh, of the key point here uh, to get an idea now actually you have to do your own analysis look at the analysis i have done uh, before the uh, uh, exam based on the pre scene i tried to summarize about the information given for an example health and leisure private limited own edward de silva uh, some information on edward de silva i have i like uh, i have in fact some information on edward de silva
then I have identified some information labeled the health and leisure private limited. I extract from the case, summarize. Then uh, what I have done is I uh, develop a short analysis based on the free information provided. Short easily you can do that one. Short one. Then I did the industry analysis also five forces. Here I have not uh, included that one. Then I did this portfolio analysis. I try to apply BCG metric for the given companies. Then I try to apply pest analysis for the given scenario. Then I try to apply leadership style. For example, Blake and Mountain managerial grids. I try to apply. Then accordingly, I have identified this is a more team approach. And here you can see the analysis, team approach. Then analyze the three level of strategy of the company. I have analyzed three level, corporate level, business level and the functional level. Then I did this functional analysis also. Then I try to apply PLC also for the given scenario, product life cycle for the given scenario and try to identify uh, each company in the life cycle model. Then I try to uh, uh, analyze this uh, case by using this ANSOP model also, product expansion grid model. And these are some of the analysis you can do before the uh, exam. Right. Then I have uh, I use this uh, transformation leadership also. I try to apply transformation leadership also for the given scenario. And then uh, you have better idea the purpose of uh, right uh, analyzing them. Right. So now we will move to the question three. So, we look at about the requirement uh, in the questions also. Part A recommend appropriate competitive strategies for the following sectors SBU to be competitive in the market by carrying out an analysis based on the three generic strategies suggested by Forte. Ah, yes, uh, he is testing uh, generic studies of Michael Forte. You know about generic strategies, cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. Then B discuss the STP process, segmentation, targeting and positioning. Then uh, C analyze the application of information technology to improve the supply chain management process of the FMCG and healthcare sector during the COVID-19 outbreak and the lockdown period. D, first one, comment on the leadership style of Edwell with appropriate theories of leaderships. In part two, advice on the type of uh, strategic change that will be suitable for SCL by using the four types of change put forward by Balagans and Hoff Haley in 2008. Strategic change uh, has been tested. E, criticized the uh, existing performance appraisal practices at SCL suggests how the company could improve its performance management process with justification of appropriate appraisal techniques that can be used by the company as part of its performance improvement strategy. F convince the management of SCL on the importance of implementing the balance scorecard as a tool to measure strategic performance management. Right. So, we will uh, go through uh, the additional information given also. Based on the common free scene, further to information provided in the common free scene, you are provided the following information for your analysis, suggestion and evaluations. Although the performance of SGL group in 2019-20 show an improvement, losses of the power and energy and the logistics sectors increase. Further, although the leisure sector experienced growth since the end of the civil war, Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it pays an unexpected downfall and had to almost close down the five-star hotel in Kogala. And some additional information given. Uh, what has happened? Losses of power and energy sector has been increased. Uh, 
uh, we experienced some growth in uh, leisure sector uh, after end of the civil war, but what happened due to COVID-19 pandemic again uh, it struggled. How you anticipate in future growth? Edward did not stop construction work of the other two hotels. Earlier uh, in the free scene, uh, it was identified uh, there are two uh, hotels uh, are to be developed. I think Koggala and the other one is Pasiguda, right? Uh, but due to lockdown, that was imposed work had to be replanned and scheduled. Uh, then uh, there may be some delay in opening uh, due to this lockdown situations. Also, with the influence of the CEO of the leisure sector, SCL managed to operate the Koggal Hotel as a quarantine center for high-end COVID suspect. Uh, uh, what happened? Uh, uh, they are fortunate, no? They had the opportunity to give the hotel uh, uh, to use as a quarantine center, right? Uh, maybe Koggal Beach, uh, like Koggal Beach. Discover the hotel operation cost and manage to secure the job of its employee. That's good. Then, uh, although many companies were facing a very difficult situation at person due to COVID-19, SCL on the other hand uh, managed to acquire one of the oldest local pharmaceutical manufacturing and distribution companies, MF Pharmaceutical Private Limited, and expanded its market share. Uh, even though uh, uh, many organizations are struggle due to this COVID-19. So, they were able to acquire one of the oldest local pharmaceutical manufacturing and distribution company, uh, the name is MFA Manufacturer Private Limited and uh, they were able to expand their market share in their segment. Then SEL also negotiated to start another BOI company in collaboration with an international pharmaceutical manufacturing company in France. Uh, they, were, uh, they were able to negotiate to start another BOI company you know, with uh, collaboration with International Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Company. However, while the above development were taking place, uh, internal politics also started to grow at HCL. Prabhat, the CEO and Sisira, the finance director, openly campaigned to change the group structure of HCL and influence Edward converted to public quoted company with separate independent companies for East sector. Uh, so, normally uh, within one company, they have all these uh, SBUs, but uh, 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 the CEO influenced them to convert them into public quoted company and have separate uh, companies. But it was also discovered that uh, fraudulent activities uh, were being carried out by some trusted employees. If you remember this uh, uh, precinct given, uh, there were uh, some point held by the CEO to increase the uh, internal control aspects, right. Uh, now, there may be weak internal controls as a result some of the fraud took place. This really upset Edward and he started to monitor others by himself, this by warning given by his medical advisors. Uh, Edward personally got involved in the tracing some transaction done in the power and energy and logistics sector. Uh, the owner himself uh, tried to verify some transaction. However, the findings were not favorable. The stress caused by this led Edward to have a heart attack that resulted in him being hospitalized. So, what happened? He captured with a heart attack. Although Edward survived, he was strongly advised by the doctor to follow certain strict rules that kept him from attending any business matter. He was asked uh, by doctors to rest, not to attempt with uh, business problems. He was worried about this initially, but then he finally agreed to comply and release his last will in which he mentioned to answer. 70 percent of his shares to his wife Vasana and the balance 30 percent to George Gunavadana. Uh, finally, uh, he agreed uh, to transfer his share to his wife Vasana uh, and the balance 30 percent to George Gunavadana. Per the Edward appointed Vasana as the group chairman and George as the group managing director and he steps them, no? He steps them. So, you have been appointed as external consultant of the new management, they seek your advice on the following. Right. Now, we look at about the requirement. 
recommend appropriate competitive strategies for the following sectors SBO to be competitive in the market by carrying out an analysis based on the three generic strategies suggested by Porter, FMCG, Healthcare, Leisure and Travel. How many sectors uh, uh, were identified in the case? Five, you know, but examiner test your knowledge only on three sectors. And what is the theory uh, you are asked to apply? The Porter's generic strategies, Michael Porter's generic strategies. Uh, now, here, uh, so what is the action verb used by the examiner? Recommend is the action verb used by the examiner. Recommend, what is the meaning of recommend? Look at our recommend. A suggestion or proposal as to the best course of action. A suggestion or proposal as to the best course of action. Now, here you have to suggest a appropriate strategy for each company. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, we will look at about the uh, the theory aspect also. Photos uh, generic strategies. Remember, uh, Michael Ford's generic strategies, he has identified how many strategies? He identified three strategies. What are the three strategies identified by Michael Ford? Cost leadership, differentiation and the focus. Uh, cost leadership, what is the cost leadership strategy? In there, you are trying to become the lowest cost producer in the industry. Uh, when you are the lowest cost producer, so what you can do? You can offer the good at the lowest price. So, under the cost leadership study, what we are trying to do? By producing good at the lowest cost, we are trying to offer the good at the lowest price. Then, what is the second strategy? Second one is different season strategy. So, under the different season strategy, what we are trying to do? We are trying to offer a unique product to the market place. We are trying to offer uh, a product with unique characteristics, which cannot be found from the other product available in the market place. For an example, offer a high quality product to the market place. Then focus, uh, under the focus strategy, we are trying to operate only in a selected market place. We are not going to operate in uh, whole market. Instead, we are going to operate only in a selected market place. For an example, Colombo district, not in whole Sri Lanka. Instead, we are going to operate only in the Colombo district. Uh, within the for, uh, selected market place, we can apply uh, either cost leadership or differentiation strategy. For an example, if you are trying to uh, apply the cost leadership strategy in the selected marketplace, we call it as cost focus strategy. In there, what we are trying to do? We are trying to offer uh, the selected uh, product at low price uh, to the selected market place. By producing the good at the lowest cost, we are offering the good at the lowest uh, price to the selected market place. For example, in the Kalamu district, we offer the good at the lowest price. Then, uh, 
the other option is to apply differential strategy in the selected market place. For example, uh, what you can do is you can offer a high quality product to the Colombo district. Right. So, if you are trying to apply cost ADP in the selected marketplace, we call it a cost focus. If you are going to apply the differentiation strategy in the selected marketplace, we call it as differentiation focus strategy. Right. So, we will look at about the, the requirement here recommend appropriate competitive strategies for the following sectors SBU to be competitive in the market uh, by carrying out an analysis based on three generic strategies such as by FOTA. So, FMCG, healthcare, leisure and travel. Now, we have an idea about uh, the three strategies theory knowledge, but look at the mark allocation here 10 marks. Huh? So, therefore, uh, you must give a uh, detailed explanation on this, uh, especially the theory part, you have to uh, explain the theory part, then you have to come to the uh, application side. So, we will uh, look at about the uh, FMCG from uh, common pre scene. So, in uh, 1985, uh, they have uh, entered into the FMC sector. So, what are the product normally they offer to the general public? We'll look at about that. FMC uh, SCL specialize in range of product for babies as well as adult including hair, skin and oral care product and pregnancies. Uh, these are some of the product uh, you are offering in the FNC sector. SCL home and personal care portfolio continue to delight householders with safe Sri Lankan product that are deeply connected to their values. It remain the brand of choice for baby care, beauty soap, hair oil, oral care. Feminine hygiene and laundry detergent. This sector has gradually uh, grown each year and has now acquired a 25 percent mark market share. Right. Uh, so, now what is the requirement in the questions? Uh, what you are going to suggest to the FMCG sector? Now, you are covering the total population here. From the total population, your market share is 25 percent. Is it uh, focus strategy? No, focus strategy is out of uh, uh, the scope since we are covering the total market. So, you have to select uh, from either cost leadership or differentiation strategy, cost leadership or differentiation strategy. So, what do you think? Uh, what about differentiations? And differentiation what we are trying to do, we are trying to offer uh, a unique product to the marketplace. Your product is having some unique attributes. Normally, when you are applying the differentiation strategy, companies uh, normally going to charge a price premium from the customers. Normally, customers are also willing to pay a price premium to get the unique product, but in this scenario, think about product like uh, soap, uh, uh, think about baby soap, right? Are customers ready to pay a price premium? It is not practical. In this market segment, customers willing to buy a product at low price. At the same time, products should carry a reasonable quality. Since you are focusing about the mass market, your product should have a reasonable quality, but product should be offered the lowest price. Therefore, uh, so what is the appropriate strategy for the SMCG sector? It should be cost leadership strategy. 
cost leadership is the ideal strategy for this particular market segment right so since customers want to uh, buy uh, a product at low price but make sure you are offering a reasonable quality product also in this segment uh, it's important to have a uh, good branding also uh, customers uh, normally prefer to uh, buy good brands then what about the healthcare healthcare what is the most appropriate strategy is it uh, differentiation or cost leadership think about pharmaceutical product for example now if you look at the pharmaceutical uh, product nowadays uh, uh, now can you uh, brand the products in the market or oh, generic products are available early actually there was a uh, opportunity to brand your product and uh, charge a price premium but uh, there was some amendment uh, to the act according this uh, uh, according this amendment uh, now it's prohibited by uh, prohibited to mention the brand name you have to uh, write the generic name of the products doctors are asked to write the generic name of the products therefore uh, there is no opportunity for separating your product from other products uh, you can't show a differentiations and uh, so what is the best strategy uh, in this segment also cost leadership is the best strategy while you are maintaining the quality of the uh, product the cost leadership can be applied in this particular segment you have to offer the good at a lowest price to the customers for example pharmacy may be willing to buy uh, your uh, product at a low price right so cost leadership we identify cost leadership as a appropriate strategy for this particular segment the leisure and travel what do you think so they have a five star hotel is it cost leadership uh, very in five star hotel i don't think so when a customer is going uh, to relax in a five star hotel they want to get the best service they want to have a unique service uh, therefore the most appropriate strategy for leisure and travel segment is differentiation strategy so differentiation is the uh, the best strategy you can apply in uh, leisure and travel segment and uh, differentiation strategy for example if you go to hotel like uh, shangila hammant or you can uh, experience the differentiation strategy in patris so even uh, 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 if you look at about the uh, different sanitary items they have put in there so high quality products are there for example spa salon products are there right uh, then uh, the fruits quality then the right uh, other uh, facilities you have lot of things can be experienced in there but can you get the product at low price set shangila some other for example no it's not practical you have to uh, pay a higher amount to uh, 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 get that particular experience so differentiation is the most appropriate strategy for the hotel sector right leisure and travel sector right uh, so that is our analysis we'll check uh, what the examiner tell on this so first of all he is talking about the theory part a uh, little bit uh, then i uh, will look at about uh, what he is recommending so healthcare i is analyzing uh, uh, the things healthcare the goods and services provided by this sbu are for the general public and normally you are providing good to the general public you are covering the total populations uh, and the cost of them have a direct relationship to market growth scl has the facility to manufacture trade and distribute including direct import from its own uh, plant its overseas joint venture company it 
can easily consider cost leadership in this market even in the hospital it can provide its own product at a very competitive price. No advantage by separating since most of the pharmaceutical uh, products go by generic name. Yes, nowadays generic name I explain the same scenario. Not much branding required as doctor recommend only the generic name. The good and service of this SPU have to be for the general public. They cannot be focused on one sector only. So, what is the appropriate strategy? Cost leadership is the appropriate strategy. Then FMCG. The market for these product uh, is the general public and cost is a vital factor. A CL distribution channel can be used to make the product available anywhere without much additional cost. CL can consider price reduction to make the product in this area obtain cost advantage. So, branding is required, but it should not focus only on differentiation as an FMG product cost matters a lot. Pass me consumer good cost is the number one factor, but the company need to balance both cost and differentiation. Yes, for example, you have to provide a reasonable quality product. FMCG products are common product, but they can be differentiated by using of the brand by different popular people. You can use some actors for example, the product of this SBU have to be for the general public, they cannot be focused on one sector only. So, recommended product strategy is cost leader ship strategy. The leisure and travel, uh, the services of this SBU are for a specific target market. This SBU is new to the industry and the target group is not the cost conscious group. Yes, for example, five star hotel are normally uh, uh, high uh, wealth the uh, individuals go there. Luxury travelers look for 5 star comfort, therefore, SCL will not have an advantage by considering the strategy of cost leadership. It is very important in this area for a different product to be a leader. Since concern is, is on high end travelers, a totally different product will have a definite advantage. So, you have to offer different product to be a leader. Important focus on selected segment, differentiation is the appropriate strategy here, right. So, with that we can complete part A and then we move to the part B. Part B, again 10 mark questions, again 10 mark questions. Discuss the STP segmentation, targeting and positioning process that SCL could apply in developing marketing strategies for the healthcare and leisure and travel sectors SBU. Right. Uh, this is not an easy question, so you have to read the question carefully. First of all, uh, we look at about the, the action verb given here, what is the action verb uh, given here? The discuss is the action verb given, discuss look at the meaning of discuss. Examine in detail by argument showing different aspect for the purpose of arriving at a conclusion. So, you have to uh, examine in details uh, by argument showing different aspects for the purpose of arriving at a conclusions. Now, look at the questions here carefully. Uh, discuss the STP process. You have to talk about the segmentation, targeting and positioning. 
that SCL could apply in developing marketing strategy for the healthcare, leisure and travel sectors. You have to talk about the healthcare separately, you have to talk about the leisure and travel sectors separately. So, first of all, you have to understand that requirement. Healthcare sector should be separately discuss about the STB process, leisure and travel sector should be separately discussed. Right. Uh, those are the requirement. So, before uh, looking about uh, the answer, we look at about the theory part also. Segmentations are normally uh, marketing strategies for a company's products are based on uh, These three principles, segmentations, target market and positioning. Segmentation, target market and the positioning. Then you know what is market segment. In a market segment, uh, normally we can identify a group of potential customers that have been identified for products who appear to have similar needs and interests. In a market segment, you can identify a customer group who normally have similar needs and interest. Then market segmentations, here the market segmentation has been tested. What is market uh, segmentation? Uh, a market segmentation is the subdividing of a market into distinct and increasingly homogeneous subgroup of customers, where any subgroup can conceivably be selected as a target market to be met with a distinct marketing mix. Under segmentation, market segmentation, what we are trying to do? We try to divide the total market into different segment, uh, total market into different segment. Uh, in their uh, within each segment, we try to identify homogeneous subgroup of customers. Uh, that means, their needs are similar and uh, what you can do is, uh, we can uh, uh, select any uh, segment as our target market and we can come up with a distinct marketing mix to serve to the customers in the selected market place. What is target markets? Targets uh, markets uh, are the market uh, segment that are chosen by a company for marketing their products. And normally, targets markets are the market segment that are chosen by a company for marketing their products. For example, if you decide to operate in Colombo district, that is our target market. I say, for example, Sri Lanka is the total market, we divide uh, them into a segment based on geographical segmentation, for example, district. Then if we decide to uh, operate only in Colombo district, so then the Colombo district is the target market. Then uh, a target market can be uh, approach uh, with a marketing mix that is specifically designed for potential customer in the target market. So, you can come up with uh, your own uh, marketing mix. You know what is marketing mix? Uh, a marketing mix is the control variable of a marketer. There are four variables for a goods, product, price, place and promotion. You can come up with a unique marketing mix to the uh, target markets. The positioning, uh, <coughs> positioning, uh, So, what is uh, market positions? Uh, the market position of a product define how the company want customer pursue it and how the product differ from other competing product in the market. In the market positioning, uh, uh, we define how customers want to 
think about our products and uh, how we can differentiate our product from the competitors product will be in the market. Then there are uh, there are uh, two uh, positioning strategies one is cost leaderships selling the good at lowest price then the other one is product differentiations in India we are trying to offer a unique product to the marketplace right now uh, we try to apply uh, the given scenario So, we have to apply this STP process, poor healthcare and leisure and travel sectors, so we will uh, try to develop an answer uh, for this. So, I have uh, two sectors, healthcare is one, the leisure and travel sectors, say so SBUs. Then, uh, exam is asking three things from us segmentations. Targeting then positioning what are the two segments? Uh, the first one is uh, healthcare business, healthcare business. In uh, other one is uh, leisure and travel sector. Leisure and travel sector. Right. So healthcare business. So how can we uh, segment our markets? What are the options available for us? For example, uh, we can think about the uh, individual consumer, individual customer, individual consumer. Saman Janata Vekika Budgala Pri Venema Salakabala Napulong, individual consumer. Then resellers, for example, pharmacies, if you are looking about resellers, resellers like pharmacies. Then uh, industrial customers, for example, hospital, hospital, industrial customers, then uh, government may be big one, government, then uh, export exporters export market export will say exports I have a few example leisure and travel sector what are the options uh, one option is local and foreign local and foreign then another option is uh, corporate uh, and individual or oh, Indulent Group, we will say Indulent Group, Indulent Group, All 
right then targeting uh, so how can we uh, target market uh, for each segment we can come up with different products right for each segment uh, uh, we can come up with different products for each segment we can come up with different product For an example, uh, if you took us about individual consumers, individual uh, consumers, uh, we can come up with some drugs uh, for what are the problem people have, diabetics, then uh, pressure, then cholesterol. The portioning, uh, what is the ideal strategy? I think uh, you have to offer the good at low price, low price, but uh, maintaining the quality level. That will be the portioning strategy. A reasonable quality product at low price. Reasonable quality product. product at low price, product at low price, that will be positioning strategy. Then uh, local and foreign, uh, uh, how about the targets, uh, targeting, local, uh, if you look at the local customers, uh, what are the people we can identify? For example, local individuals, that is one group individual, then another one is corporate customers, another group you can identify, individual and corporate customers. For each segment you can come up with different product, for example, corporate customers uh, may be bundled products at low price, then foreign people, there may be different type of foreigners, for example, European, Europe. Then uh, America, then Asia, Asian people are like that. You can have a different group and you can come up with different uh, product on them. So, uh, what will be the portioning strategy? Right. Uh, Leisure and travel sector, I think, uh, is uh, appropriate to come up with the uh, differentiation strategy. Uh, we can offer highly differentiated product highly differentiated product, highly differentiated product, highly differentiated product can be offered for the leisure and travel sector. Uh, in our product, uh, we can give more uh, values to the customer. Right. So, we will uh, look at about the examiner answer also. So, yes, I explain uh, the theory part a little bit. Now, healthcare business, uh, he assigned for a similar example, right. But portioning, if you look at about portioning here, I little bit deviate from ex example. So, what I have tried to portion uh, the healthcare business is as a uh, reasonable quality product at low price. That is the portioning statement we are using for the healthcare business, right. Then uh, lesson travel, uh, he has not defined one particular strategy, portioning strategy, but here I define a portioning strategy, I define it uh, highly differentiated products, right. So, similar other things are matching uh, uh, with my one, right. Right. 
right. So, 10 mark questions, then we can move to the part C, part C But the part C requirement analyze the application of information technology to improve the supply chain management processes of FMCG and uh, healthcare sectors during the COVID-19 outbreak and the lockdown period. Analyze the application of information technology uh, to improve the supply chain management processes of the process of the FMCG and healthcare sectors during the COVID-19 outbreak and the lockdown period. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, we we'll look at about uh, the action verb given here. Analyze is the action verb given. What is the requirement of uh, analyze here? Examine in detail in order to determine the solution or outcome. So, examine in detail. So, you have to go in depth. What is the purpose of going in depth uh, to come up with a solution or a outcome? Now, here test your theory knowledge, analyze the application of information technology to improve the supply chain management process. So, first of all look at about the theory part relevant to this. Right. So, there are four ways uh, you can use uh, information system right, for the supply chain activities. What are the four ways? Uh, internet, intranet, then EDI, then other one is uh, radio frequency identification device RFID uh, technology. So, internet uh, how you can use uh, internet? For example, you can uh, identify suppliers, then you can identify, uh, you can uh, place orders online also, then internet. For example, internal you can use uh, to make orders, at the same time you can allow uh, external supplier to access to companies internet. The EDI in their uh, a tons of uh, structural data is taking place by agreed message standard from one computer system to another without human intentions. Then uh, RFID radio frequency identification device, RFID, uh, RFID can be used to identify item of goods automatically when they are being dispatched or more commonly when they are received to warehouse from the suppliers is the theory part. Now, here the requirement is uh, analyze uh, analyze the application of information technology to improve the supply chain management process of FMCG and healthcare sector during the COVID-19 outbreak and the lockdown period. So, based on the theory, you can develop an answer very easily here. Now, for example, internet. So, how you can inter, uh, use internet? Uh, for example, you can use internet to find out new suppliers. Then, uh, you can make online purchasing also. You can place orders uh, with the suppliers. Then internet, internally uh, you can use internet for example, uh, to make uh, orders internally. Uh, for example, manufacturing people can use internet to uh, request raw material from the warehouse. Then not only that, uh, even uh, you can uh, allow some of the external suppliers to uh, access to 
company uh, internet and they can see uh, the stock availability for example, right. So, then when you allow external people to access your internal network, uh, we call it as extranet. Then uh, EDI, EDI can be used uh, to communicate with the suppliers through that one uh, without uh, uh, having human intervention, you can uh, exchange uh, some of the documents right very easily. For example, when you have a contact connected with the supplier through EDI, you can make uh, orders very easily. Then uh, RFID, RFID can be used to track uh, the movements of the goods, it can be connected with the WMS system, warehouse management system, then through that one you can track uh, the movements of the goods, right. So, you can easily get this 10 mark, it is a very easy question. If you have study the theory part, uh, without any difficulty you can get the full marks. So, we look at about the examiner's answer also on this. First of all, uh, he has given uh, some introduction about the theory part here. To improve the supply chain process of SCL, the following application of technology can be used. First one internet. The internet can be used as a method of locating suppliers for product and placing orders online. Online purchasing is available to business as well as consumers. Online purchasing can add value by enabling the buyer to locate items that are needed and where there are several supply for identical items, the buyer can obtain the best price. Yes, you can uh, get the uh, raw material for example, from the lowest uh, of a supplier. The internet allows to showcase the organization potential customers and any other who want to know about the organization. So, simply you can uh, tell about two things, you can locate the supplier, uh, then uh, uh, what you can do, you can purchase the good from them very easily from the lowest supplier. The internet, the internet can be used by an organization to place orders for item internally, internally you can uh, make orders, here also example given for example, purchase requisition may be submitted electronically to the company's buying department. Then uh, next part is uh, allowing external suppliers to access your company internet. External suppliers may be given draw access to the organization intranet via the internet. Supply may then be allowed to monitor the company's production schedule in order to anticipate future orders. The internet can also be used to place orders with a supplier. You can make the orders through this also. Then EDI, electronic data interchange. EDB can be used to transfer structural data by agreed message standard from one computer system to another without human intervention, that is the theory explanation. Then ETI is another way in which companies can communicate electronically with suppliers or customers for the purpose of placing orders for good and possibly also paying for them. Then RFID, in logistic RFID can be used uh, to identify item of good automatically when they are being dispatched or more commonly when they are received into the warehouse from the supplier. So, it is evident that all the SPUs of HCL can make out use of above system to improve their supply chain management activities such as for example, I am identify upstream and downstream part of the supply chain model and using the information technology strategy to smooth the operational activities. Healthcare and SMGs, you can complete order management, stock controlling on time, availability of goods, sourcing and supply, sales monitoring and daily performance of supply chain activities, invoicing, updating stock information, tracking orders and suppliers. During lockdown, in order to avoid the loss of orders, revenue, the application of internet online ordering can be used. Yes, you can use the uh, internet uh, to have to get uh, online orders. Right. Then uh, we will move to the part D. You know, there are two parts here.
first part uh, carry 4 marks, second part carry 6 marks. So, first of all we will look at about the part 1, comments on the leadership style of Edward with appropriate theories of leadership. So, what is the action verb given here? Comments, look at about the meaning of comment. provide written remark expressing an opinion in both positive and negative perspective. So, you have to talk about the positive part plus negative part also. Right. Comments on the leadership style of Edward with appropriate theories of leaderships. So, we look at about the theory part little bit also. So, first of all uh, uh, we can define what is leaderships, what leaderships. So, leadership is the activity of influencing people uh, to achieve the organizational objectives. There are some leadership skills like entrepreneurship, interpersonal skills, decision making and problem solving skills, then self development skills. So, if you remember uh, how many theories uh, you have learned in relation to leaderships, shall we look at about uh, that little bit. So, we have uh, look at about the uh, few leadership theories, leadership theories, actually we look at about three leadership theories. First one is uh, trait approach leaderships, traits approach leaderships, then the second one is behavioral approach leaderships. The third one is uh, situational approach leaderships. Under the trait theory, uh, we look at about uh, the characteristic of a leader. Of a leader. For an example, uh, honesty, creativity, under the behavioral approach, uh, we look at about the behavior of a leader, under that uh, we identify uh, two variable leader can focus, one is on task, other one is on the people. If 
if a leader is focusing more on uh, tasks in their hand, we identify task oriented leadership style, task oriented leadership style If a leader is more focusing on the people, then we identify people oriented leadership style. Such leaders were called as people oriented leaders. Under situational approach, it say there is no one leadership style which can be applied to all locations. The effectiveness of the leadership style depend on the situational factors. Situational factors, right. So, we will look at about the, the slide also a little bit. So, Behavioral theories, uh, we we'll look at about few behavioral theories uh, like Estridge College model, tell, sell, consult, joint, then Blake and Mountain managerial grid concern for task, concern for people, then we we'll look at about transformation leadership also. Right, here, uh, so one model we can apply is the Estridge Management College model. We remember the Estridge Management College model, uh, there are four leadership style, tells, sells, consult and join. So, tells mean, uh, what is tells? The same is called as autocratic also, in their leader take the decision and ask subordinate to implement the decisions. Then, uh, cells mean leader take the decision, but explain the reason for taking such decisions. Then, uh, the next one is uh, consult. What is consult? Uh, under the consult, uh, before taking the decisions, uh, leader consult from the uh, consult the employees. The joint democratic mean lead and followers take the decision together. Right. Uh, what will be the most uh, appropriate from these four? If you take these four, I think it is more uh, not autocratic actually. Uh, this guy is little bit democratic also to some extent. Uh, I think uh, we will take uh, it as persuasive cells. So, since uh, Right. After he has taken decision, he communicate that one to others and he explain the reason for that one. Therefore, we can say uh, sell so persuasive. Then uh, any uh, other uh, way we can look at about the same, uh, if you look at about these task orientations and people orientation aspect, what do you think? Task orientation and people orientation F6. Uh, I think he is looking about both, no? Task orientations uh, plus the people orientation. Why I am saying like that? Uh, we will go through uh, some facts given in the case. So, uh, when we were uh, going through uh, the case actually, there was certain point about this leadership style, look at about that uh, point. In there, there was some point uh, relevant to that. leaderships uh, here uh, here look at this edward always believe the capabilities of his team and trusted them uh, 
uh, he ensure that his team participate in regular training and use novel technique during practices and at tournaments. Uh, even when running his business, he always mentioned the importance of training and acquiring the latest technology, not just for day to day work, but also for the business culture. Edward was a strong believer of partnering and building relationship with people. Uh, these point actually, pride in training, developing employees, developing good relation with the employees, uh, focus on the employee aspect, employee orientation is uh, highlighted in there. Right? He trusted everyone who work in his company. Right. So, those indicate that he is uh, people oriented. Then uh, some additional information is there. Uh, this Edward firmly believe that the employees are the strength of the company and provide all the passes such as transport, food and sometimes logistic for certain staff members that uh, show uh, people orientations. Then the employees are fed well and there are long standing employee working in the company. Edward inspires his board members as well as his employee to unexpected and remarkable results. That show task orientation also. Uh, therefore, he is uh, focusing on both task orientation and the people orientations. You can uh, talk on that also, task orientation and people orientations also uh, you can uh, talk. If you look at about this Blake and Morton model, uh, so what are the things? Uh, Blake and Morton model. So where you can put uh, his leadership style. Here. So, if you look at about this model uh, here, uh, you can consider it as a team management, full concern of the people, concern for the people, at the same time full concern about the production. So, people management, right. So, we look at about the, the examiner answer also. So, leadership is not about who you are, it is about what you do. A leadership style consists of the trait and behaviors uh, the leader display when leading and managing employees. Also, different form of leadership behavior are used in different ways, in different situations. Based on limited information available and by analyzing Edward character, it appears that he is focused on task performance, directive behavior as well as the relationship people supportive behavior. How it is also noted that his style of providing benefit to employee is selective. Right. We give more information on this now when we analyze in the question. He is having both task behavior plus the employee oriented behavior also. For the Astrich Management College model, it will demonstrate the sales pursuit leadership style. We are in by the same. Uh, we show that the leaders still make all the decisions, but believe that uh, subordinate have to be motivated to accept them and carry them out properly. Employees still are made aware of the reason for decision, but a few of Edward's senior management colleagues oppose his decision. This show that he is not very effective in convincing, challenging his associate. However, he still went ahead with his decision and implemented them. As explained above and with the limited facts given, Edward style of leadership can also be considered democratic. The democratic style encourage employees and stakeholders part in decision making the lead and followers reach decision by concession agreement. Oh, in addition to this uh, uh, one actually uh, you can apply uh, some additional model uh, to show you answer. For example, 
right. I use uh, I use uh, Blake and Morton Magill grids, right. Uh, you can use that one also and show that uh, he is under the team management, right. It is the alternative ones you can show, right. Then uh, with that uh, we can complete uh, the first part of D. Then uh, we can move to part 2 of the D. Part 2 of the D. Right. Uh, if you look at our part two. So, what is the action verb use? Advice is the action verb use. Look at about the advice. What is advice? Of a suggestion about the best course of action in a manner suited to the recipient. Of a suggestion about the best course of action in a manner suited to the recipient. You have to come up with the suggestion about the best course of action in a manner suited to the recipient that the requirement. Advice on the type of strategic change that would be suitable for SCL by using the four type of change put forward by Balagan and Hope Haley. I test your knowledge on uh, this Balagan and Haley model on strategic change. So, there are four uh, options given by these two gentlemen, you have to suggest the most appropriate change for this particular uh, organizations. So, we will uh, look at about the theory aspect also. So, first of all, uh, we will look at about uh, the theory on this. types of chain Balagans and Hof Haley model. So, he uh, try to uh, identify, he try to identify four strategies based on uh, two criteria, right. Two criteria, one is scope of change, the other one is nature of change. If you look at about this uh, nature of change, in there we look at about the speed we are going to introduce the change, right. Speed, uh, we are looking about the speed, uh, then under the scope of change, uh, we are looking about the end result or in other word extent, end result of the right, extent is uh, considered in there. If you look at about the uh, this nature of change, speed, there are two options. One is uh, incremental change, other one is big bang change. Incremental, uh, other one is big bang change. What is the difference between incremental and big bang? Incremental mean a small change will be introduced, not a major change. Step by step, we are going to induce the change. Big band mean quick change, quickly we introduce the change, a major change uh, quickly. For an example, uh, in my OPS I remember initially there was a plan to introduce uh, new IT system by using incremental change. In there, the branch uh, for the branch system will not be introduced uh, immediately instead time time system will be implemented. For example, first of all we are going to introduce uh, the system for 5 branches. After implementing that, then we are going for another 5 after some time like that. Step by step we are going to induce the change. But later we decide to change that approach to big bang. Under big bang, 
in one particular day the system will be introduced to the whole 260 branches. So, what do you think about the risk level if you look at about this incremental change and big bang? Normally, incremental change the risk is low because you are gradually introducing the change, you know, but big bang you are going to introduce uh, the major change within short period of time for all. So, here the risk is high big bang right. Then uh, if you look at about this scope of change, uh, uh, scope of change uh, India we look at about the end result or in other word extend. We have two options one is realignment, other one is transformations. Now, what is different between these two realignment and transformations? Under the realignment, uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to uh, introduce the change within the existing business model and within the existing organizational culture. And realignment, we are not going to change the fundamental in the business. We are not going to change the current business model and the organizational culture. Within the existing business model and organizational culture, we are going to induce the change. But under the transformation, uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to introduce the change by making changes to our business model and the organizational culture also. So, business model plus organization culture will be changed under these transformations, right. So, then the perception is adaptations. Uh, adaptation is the most common, uh, most common uh, change model we can identify. Under the adaptations, uh, we are trying to introduce change within the existing business model and the organization culture and the change will be small one not a big change. For an example, uh, change in product design, changes in product design or method of productions, then launches of new products, launches of new products. Then related diversifications, those are example for such. Then reconstruction in the, uh, the speed change will be introduced and uh, this is uh, some sort of a turnaround strategy. For an example, uh, changes in organized structure, then uh, introduction of a cost cutting program, those are some of the example. For a dice white company, for example, uh, acquisitions, you acquire a new company, this example for reconstructions. Then divestment is again example for uh, reconstruction strategy. Then Evolution strategy, what is evolution strategy? Uh, India, we are going for a change in current business model and organizational culture, but incremental change will be introduced. For an example, as a result of uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic situations, many businesses introduce uh, e-commerce platform to the world. This is an example of evolutions. Then revolutions, what is revolutions uh, strategy? Uh, under the revolutions, uh, we are going to change the current business model and organizational culture and we will introduce a speed change. So, revolution completely uh, uh, revolutions. Uh, for example, uh, uh, what are the example? Uh, 
you change the top management, you change the culture. So, those are some of the example of revolutions. If you look at my Sri Lankan cricket team, for example, uh, so we need to uh, have a revolution change now. Uh, you know what has happened to Sri Lankan cricket team now, no? So, what will be the ideal strategy for Sri Lankan cricket team uh, to uh, completely change the things? I think uh, our honorable sport ministry is trying to do that, no? So, he appointed some uh, high end uh, committee, cricket committee. Uh, including uh, Arvinda Silla, Roshan Mahana, Muttaya Murlidharan, uh, uh, those are good uh, cricketers, right. So, he appointed a committee, right. Then he changed coaches, I saw Chamindavas has been appointed as the new pass bowling coach. So, we can expect lot of changes taking place within short period of time, right. So, that is a revolution uh, change, uh, similar to what is happening with Sri Lanka cricket team. I think uh, it's clear for you uh, the theory aspects from uh, right, uh, some of the uh, note here, additional note is there. So, what do you think? What is the most appropriate uh, strategy for this particular organizations? Is it uh, I adaptations? I do not think so. Right, uh, so we need to have a uh, right uh, transformation change. Right, so is it revolutions? I don't think uh, within short period of time uh, we can't go for a major change. No, therefore uh, I think uh, it should be uh, incremental change plus transformations. Therefore, what is the ideal strategy for this organization, ideal strategy uh, is uh, the evolution strategy is the ideal strategy for this particular organizations. So, we will uh, look at about, uh, but the examiner tell on this, what is answer, whether this answer is matching with our answer. So, first of all, uh, he has uh, introduced uh, the theory part on this. So, look at about the analysis based on the above, SEL would be able to design, select the change approach to achieve its ultimate goals further. SCL as one of the key players in several industries in Sri Lanka mainly focus on driving its investment strategies toward achieving a sustainable competitive advantage. It is advisable to study each sector separately and decide the type of change most appropriate to the respect to sector SBU. So, you have to look at about the each sector and then you have to determine what is the most appropriate one. As HCL goal is to achieve sustainable competitive advantage and create value stakeholders, it is advisable to follow the evolution change approach, incremental and transformation. Evolution is an incremental process that lead to a new paradigm. It may arise from the careful analysis and planning or may be the result of learning processes. It is transformational nature may not be obvious while it is taking place. So, he is suggesting evaluations. Uh, so, we uh, also select the same right. With that we can complete. Uh, can complete the part D and then we can move the part E. Part E. So, look at the action verb given here. Criticize the existing performance appraisal practice as HCL and suggests how the company could improve its performance management process with justification of appropriate appraisal techniques that can be used by the company as part of its performance improvement strategy. So, criticize the existing performance appraisal. So, criticize for this use, we look at about the meaning of uh, criticize.
So, form and express a judgment, uh, form and express a judgment, uh, that is the meaning of criticize. Criticize the existing performance appraisal practice at HCL. So, first of all you want to identify what is the existing performance appraisal practices at HCL. Can we identify any performance appraisal information from the new information given? We will check. I think there are no informations no, here. So, we will go to uh, common free scene. So, if you look at about the, the leadership style given, leadership style given relevant to Edward. So, look at this uh, Edward firmly believe that the employees are the strength of the company and provide all the facilities such as transport, food and sometime logistic for certain staff members in order to keep them productive and loyal to the organizations. So, what do you think about this uh, the proposed uh, performance appraisal method uh, he has used? It seemed to be uh, not good no. Uh, so, Edward firmly believe that the employees are the strength of the company and provide all the passes such as transport and food and sometime logistic for certain staff members, not for everyone. Right. So, uh, it indicate uh, they may not have uh, a proper way of uh, treating employees. So, we have found uh, some answers for the first part. Then we look at about the next part of the same questions. Criticize the existing performance approach practice CCL suggests how the company could improve its performance management process with justification of appropriate appraisal techniques. Uh, with justification of appropriate appraisal technique that can be used by the company as part of its performance improvement strategy. So, we will look at about theory aspect about the uh, appraisal techniques. So, what are the method uh, we have learned? Oral appraisal, guided assessment, grading, behavioral incident method, result oriented scheme. So, under the oral appraisal, uh, how uh, manager uh, evaluate the performance of employees? The manager write in narrative form their judgment about the employee. Uh, there is no con guaranteed consistency of the criteria and area of assessment. Uh, manager Nikang summary form making employee ki performance ka gana liyane kata ma thandi karanni ha eto kota criteria tikak ne predefined criteria not given no then guided assessment in their predefined criteria given based on that he is commenting for example what about the employee uh, commitment uh, what about the employee uh, knowledge uh, in relation to that manager is giving a comments right then grading uh, in India, for a selected criteria, you have to select a grade. For example, say uh, commitment, uh, there may be few grade uh, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From that, you select one, right. 
then you can get aggregate total. Then the next one is behavioral incident method. In there we look at about the behavior of the employee. Uh, we try to identify some of the critical incidents. The result oriented scheme, in India, uh, we uh, review the performance against the specific target uh, given for the employees. We set target for the employee based on the performance of the employee in India, we uh, come to a judgment about the performance. For example, say manufacturing employee, we go target for him to produce uh, some uh, unit of particular products, we say 10 unit for a day, at the end of the day we check how many unit actually he has produced. Now, based on that we come to judgment whether his performance is good or bad. So, what is the uh, suggesting method uh, for them? In most of the organization I think easily you can apply this result oriented scheme. You can go target for the employee based on the achievement of uh, the target uh, uh, we can uh, uh, decide. Uh, the incentives, bonus, those things can be decided, right. So, here also we can apply the same. So, we look at about uh, what the examiner tell on this. He is giving some uh, right uh, explanation on this. Uh, performance appraisal is part of the system of performance management, he is explaining theory a bit, including goal settings, performance monitoring, feedback and improvement planning. For any organization before introducing a performance appraisal system, it must ensure that there is a basis for evaluations and there are proper appraisal technique in place. First SCL has introduced the appraisal uh, uh, appropriate appraisal technique for each SBU. It seems that at present it still allow the non-profitable SBU to continue the same until they generate profit. The general purpose of any appraisal system to improve the efficiency of the organization by ensuring that the individual within its are performing to the best of their ability and developing their potential for improvement, the theory part actually. Further, when looking at the existing performance appraisal practices, adverse leadership styles seem to play an important role in the performance appraisal process of SCL. With its Support background, it would be strong believer partnering and building relationships with people. As such, he firmly believe employees are the strength of the company and provide all the facilities for certain staff members to keep them loyal. Certain staff members, we identify the same point. So, how it sits in that this practice is not company wide but selective and would be even on gut feeling, not a good practice. This practice is not an acceptable HR practice at all and would lead to confusion, lack of trust in the performance appraisal system. This is not a good performance appraisal system. The product carried out by trusted employee may indicate there may be some loopholes in the performance management system adopted by CL. Therefore, facilities should be provided to all the employees. Special allowances may be granted based on the annual performance management result. Based on the annual management result, the special allowance can be granted. As a suggestion to improve the performance management process of SCL, the management could use appraisal techniques such as result oriented scheme, overall approach, guided assessment, grading and behavioral incident method. In the case of SCL, the most appropriate performance appraisal technique is to adopt a result oriented scheme. We also suggest the same. This review performance against specific target and standard of performance which are agreed in advance by a manager and subordinate together. So, there are significant advantage of such an approach. So, what are the advantage? The subordinate is more involved in the appraisal because he she is able to evaluate his progress in achieving joint agreed target. The manager does not act as a critics of the subordinate, instead the manager is a coach and helper. Clear and agreed target for performance can help him the subordinate behavior. Uh, the theory aspect is explained in the scheme. The effect of the scheme will depend on the target set and the commitment both parties to make it work. So, you can also suggest the same. Right, with that we can complete uh, that part, part E can be completed, then we can move to part F, last part. Convince the management of SCL 
on the importance of implementing the balance scorecard as a tool to measure strategic performance management. So, what is the action verb uh, use here? The convince is the action verb use. So, we look at about what is the meaning of convince. Convince mean uh, to persuade others to believe something using evidence and no argument. You are trying to persuade others to believe something using evidence and no argument. You have to tell why balance scorecard is more appropriate in this situation by giving some point. Right. So, we look at about theory aspect also a bit. Uh, Right, uh, we will uh, have some uh, discussion on this uh, before moving to uh, the slide balance scorecard. So, balance scorecard, this Kaplan and Northern uh, introduced this balance scorecard model. So, when he uh, introduced this balance scorecard, uh, they provide the reason for introducing this model. So, normally uh, the organization use uh, financial indicators, financial indicators to measure the performance of the organizations. So, Kaplan and Norton say finance indicators are not the best indicator to measure the performance of the organizations. They provide some reason for that. So, what are the reasons uh, they provide? They say under this uh, financial uh, indicators, Normally, we look at about uh, the historical performance of the organizations. Historical performance of the organization, but the future performance will not be guaranteed from the historical performance. That is one of the argument Kaplan had. Here, we are looking about some historical quantitative measurement, but he argue the future performance is normally based on the qualitative indicators. Qualitative indicators, uh, he say normally uh, you have to look at about uh, four different aspects to judge the performance of the organizations. Mere looking about the financial indication is not a good approach. So, what are the four perspectives uh, identified by the Kaplan and Norton? BSC, he identified four perspectives financial were identified as it is, he did not ignore that one, financial perspectives. Then customer perspective, customer perspective, then internal business, internal business or operational perspective. 
operational perspective. The learning and innovation perspective, learning and innovation perspective, So, according to uh, Kaplan and Norton, there are four perspectives organization want to focus. If organization is performing well in all these four perspectives, then Kaplan and Norton say uh, we can come to a conclusion that organization is performing well. But if organization is not performing well in one perspective, then we can say organization is not in a balanced position. Right, under the financial perspective, we measure the financial performance of the organizations. Financial performance of the organization is measured. We can consider some of the KPIs for this purpose like uh, gross profit, net profit, ROA, ROCE. Then under the customer perspective, we check whether customer is uh, happy about the organizations, customer satisfaction is measured. For example, we can consider measurement like market share, number of customer complaint uh, to evaluate this. Then internal business perspective, here we look at about the efficiency of the organizational activities. We can use some of the measures like uh, wastage, uh, uh, number of defects you need to measure these perspectives. Then the learning and innovation perspective, here we measure the level of learning of the organizations. For example, number of new product introduced, the research and development cost, then uh, training cost, then number of training days for employees. Those are some of the KPIs we can use. Right. Uh, if you look at about the PowerPoint presentations, uh, uh, here. Uh, I have identified some of the indicators we can use. Right. Then uh, we will go to the questions. Now here, uh, what is the requirement currently is the management of SCL on the importance of implementing the balance scorecard as a tool to measure strategic performance management. Yes, convinced now we can give the reasons, a mere uh, focusing on financial indicators are not suitable. We can give reason on that, even we can provide example uh, to prove that. So, balance scorecard can be used. What we have to do is uh, we have to uh, identify some KPIs and set target on each perspective. Right. Uh, we we'll look at about uh, the examiner's answer on this also. Right. The management of SCL should monitor and control the company's strategic performance and its operation strategies such as supply chain, marketing, finance and so on. To do this, they need information about performance of the different aspect of the company's operational strategies. The balance scorecard by Kaplan and Norton provide an approach to setting performance target and measuring performance. The basic idea behind the BAC is that traditional measures of company performance focus too much on short term financial performance such as annual profit or return on capital. Then Kaplan and Norton argue that this traditional approach was too narrow in its focus is measure historical form without any regard to the future and it did not measure how current form will eventually have an impact on future performance. Future financial performance will be determined by non-financial achievement. So, we explain the same scenario, we discuss the same point, you have to include that one in your answer. You have to tell that uh, financial indicators are not uh, the best uh, way to judge the performance of the organization since uh, it is uh, too narrow in their focus 
and uh, looking about the past performance and which will not give indication about the future performance. Future performance can be uh, measured by looking about non-financial achievement. Uh, then the duo suggested that organizers should have a scorecard measuring different aspect of performance. Most of these should be non-financial in nature because non-financial performance now will affect financial performance in the future. Then theory aspect, you can have four perspective. In relation to each one, you can have target. Right? Uh, you normally what you can do, you can identify some KPI and you can set the target on each aspects. Then with regard to uh, the performance management, it still has to consider all its SBU separately and analyze them under each perspective as shown above. For each SBU, you should have separate BSE. Then it can assess the SBU in terms of sustainability and develop KPIs to improve performance in each area. You have to set separate KPI for each SBU under four perspective. If FCL as a group basis, uh, as a group does not want to consider financial losses in an SBU until the operational aspect of the business achieve their efficient and effective level, FCL can decide on the strategies to support that SBU in the best possible way. By looking at the past figures only, SCL will not be able to judge the performance of an SBU. By using the BSC, all SBU will get an opportunity to show their strong areas and for the best strategy to develop particular area if necessary. Yes, looking at the past is not uh, good. So, uh, based on that, we cannot come to judgment about the future performance. So, he has given lot of uh, explanation here for a 4 marks. Right. Uh, for example, if we take the losses in the logistics sector, there is an increase in losses in 2020 by just looking at this figure, someone can suggest considering selling it or giving up the operation. How if we apply the BSC to this sector, it may give a different result as shown below. Now look at uh, the example given by the examiner. Financial to shareholders, what has happened? Losses. Look at customers, logistics sector, what customer has say. Most of the customers are highly satisfied with the logistic arrangement made uh, in the areas such as healthcare, SMG, leisure, etc. Operational business operations uh, uh, internally understand what areas SCL has to improve on, address these and plan learning and innovation on learning growth, in which case SCL has to be innovative and creative, compare with competitors and reduce new concept. Look at this financially, they are not good, no losses, but customer aspect they are happy, no that indicate in the future. So, there will be more sales to the organization, right. This analysis show, uh, uh, this analysis allow the board to look at, at the SBU from different angles as the logistics sector provide a satisfactory service to other SBU. It may be important to consider the operational aspects and growth aspect and work to turn around the organization rather than just taking decision by looking at the financial performance only. Yes, this uh, model clearly suggests us not to look at only the financial performance to come to conclusion about the organization performance. So, what we have to do is we have to look at about the four prospective and come to a conclusions. So, with that uh, we can complete uh, the answer for the part F and we can conclude the discussion of the paper. It took almost 5 hours to complete our discussions. I hope uh, it is useful for you. Uh, then, thank you very much uh, for listening uh, the sessions.